Hey everyone, welcome back to another live coding session where I'm going to be building an HTML5 Simon game. If you don't know what Simon is, it's basically a game where you have like four colors on the board and they flash with different sequences and your job is to, or your goal in the game is to click the sequences back in the order of which they played. So let me just type in Simon game. Looks like this. So it has like four little half circles or arcs. They flash different colors, you click them back in the sequence. So pretty straightforward, but let's figure out how to code this. Um, and right before I get started, if you enjoy videos like this where I live code games or HTML5 web applications, be sure to subscribe and click the like button or the bell icon, I mean. Click everything, just click everything for me because you're going to be getting a lot of um, cool videos in the future. So you want to get those notifications of what I'm building. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm going to type in or build out a new file. So we have an index file. And what we want to do in this index file is let's try to build out that Simon board in HTML. So I might have to Google a little bit. I'm not entirely sure how to do this yet, but I'm assuming we need to use some CSS to make four quarter circles. And I think you can use it with like bot uh, margin bottom left <laughs> or border bottom left. We will we'll find out in just a second. So let me just make a style CSS. And what we want to do here is let's just try to create a quarter circle. So I'm going to say div. Actually, I could say um say panel. We're going to call those panels. So like those little uh, quarter circles are going to be called panels. And in here, we should be able to say background color is red. And I think we could probably do like a border bottom left radius is 50%. Uh, we'll find out. Let's just try 200 pixels and see what happens. It might not do anything for now. Let's see. Width is 100 pixels. Height is 100 pixels. Let me make sure it's not caching anything. There we go. So I had to make sure my terminal was open because my browser was caching that web page. <laughs> yeah, so we made a a little bottom left quarter circle. And I think at this point, we just need three others. So get rid of background color and put that in its own little class so that we can uh, kind of change these up. I'll make a couple of others. I'll make green, I'll make a blue, and I'll make a yellow. How about that? I don't know if these are the actual colors that the Simon game uses, but these are the colors we're going to be using in our Simon game here. So we got four colors now, and what we can do is we can make four other panels. You know what, we should probably do this. Bottom left panel, bottom right panel, top left panel, top right panel. That's a little bit more descriptive about what all these are. <laughs> and honestly, these colors I just made, I don't think there's a need for them right now. So we're just going to do a bunch of uh, copying and pasting. We have four different panels. And we could clean this up. And we probably could in a second. So I'm just going to do bottom right panel. Um, bottom left panel. Top right panel. And top left panel. And really the only difference between all these is like, this one would be by bottom right. This would be bottom left. To be boredom, border top right, and this would be top left. And I'll just make sure I change the colors in all these. Cool, so we have all the different colors set up. Um, because we don't want to create sloppy CSS. We could probably just do this.
And then for all these, so we made a panel class that kind of took out the height and the width so that we don't have to keep on hard coding all that stuff. And we applied it to all of our divs. So we have our four quarter circles now. And notice that they're all a little bit out of whack. So we need top left and top right to be on the same row, I guess you could say. So I'll wrap those in a div. You know how div block elements work. Basically, everything is um, grouped together. And I'll do these two in its own row. No, I don't need to do a row here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a display inline block on the panel. If I save this, we have top left and top right, and then followed by the other one. So if I add display inline block to this, these will actually reposition themselves and not um, kind of break the margins. So you can look up what display inline block is if you don't know. But we have now a, a Simon Says board, basically. And I'm not impressed with the size of this. So let's just make the size a little bit bigger. And as far as the border, I think we can add a pixel. Huh. Let me see. I do 100% what happens. Yeah, we'll just make it 100%. So that makes all sense. So we have our little board here. I do think the background color was black. This would be easier to see. Right on. Okay, so I just want to position this thing in the center of our screen. And you can do that, I think, with just doing a text align on these. Center, and that should put it to the center. It does not. Let's see. Try it on the body. This might actually not work. Okay, if you add it to the body, because the body is the parent container of these things, so it'll put everything in the center. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of margin to the body to bring those a little bit down. That was too much. Probably should have done 30 pixels. All right, so now it's kind of centered in the middle of my page and we can start messing around with it. The last thing I think I need to do with styling is the, these weren't full half uh, quarter circles in the Simon Says game. They were like, I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but there's basically a circle in the center here that has like the Simon logo. So what we can do here is, what can we do here? We might just have to add a circle. I'll just add a class called center. And you know, there's like a thousand ways to do the same thing in CSS and JavaScript and coding. So there's probably a better way. I'm just doing the first thing that comes to my head and seeing if it works. So same deal. I think we need to add a width, a height, and a border radius. Uh, I think 50%, maybe 100%. We'll find out. And a background color of gray. So at this point, it draws down here. That is not what we want. We instead, oh no, didn't mean to close those. This needs to be display inline block as well. And what we could do, uh, the hack at this, let me make this 200 pixels, see what happens. The hack at this, we just add a top and make it move up. And I don't know if that is, you actually have to add a position absolute, I think, to this to make it move with top and bottom. It disappeared. Okay, so at this point, let's find out where that thing went. Right here, off the page. And this is the most versatile way to do this because if I change the size of stuff, it's going to break. But. Uh, 
you know what, this should probably be wrapped in To do this properly, this would probably need to be part of this container. And this container needs a position of relative, and this needs a position of absolute. I wonder if I just put it here. This will give like a quick little, little hack fix for it. Oops. Style is position relative. Anyway, I'm just going to do this the hacky way. I'm just going to figure out where it needs to be on the page and then move it there. Because honestly, this is more of a, I'm more focused on the JavaScript, the programming aspect of all this, right? I don't care about CSS too much. That's not my, my passion. Positioning stuff on a page isn't fun to me. But other people are really good at it. Some people love web design and stuff like that. So lastly, Okay, so we have our Simon Says game. I think this is a good enough representation of what we want. Um, and let's pretend like we have one of these that are active. And when it's active, we're going to make it white. So let's just add a class called active here and see if it turns white. Boom, okay. And we're, we're going to be using that for when they flash. Like, you know how the game works. Basically, they flash different colors every so often, and then you have to come back and click them in the same sequence at which they flashed. Um, okay, last thing. I mean, not the last thing. There's probably a thousand more things we got to do here, but make it cursor pointer so when I hover over these, I can actually click them. And again, just for some usability, when you hover over these panels, what was that drop shadow? There was like some drop box shadow hack that I, I did before. I don't remember, but there's a way to make the border inside so it doesn't mess up. I have to Google that again. Inside border CSS. I thought it was a box shadow. Yeah, it's box shadow, but there's a, probably a special way. You got to call it. You got to call it like that. All right, so we're just trying to make it so when you hover over, it turns the border red. And I think that's how you do it. There we go. Ooh, red's not a good color. Um, by cyan. There. So all's good except for this black part. But you know what? I'm not going to be a perfectionist. Good enough for me. So that means it's good enough for you, right? So the first thing we could start on. I think in terms of the JavaScript, the actual like functionality, the interactivity, whatever the word is, we want to flash these at different sequences, at different colors. So I think what we could do in JavaScript is have an array of one of these four colors is going to be like in the array. And we're going to step through that with like an interval. So every second we just flash one and go through the entire array, flashing them all. And when the array is done, we allow the user to actually start clicking on stuff. So let's go back to our index and import a script here. Um, well, index.js. And what we can do, what can we do? We need to grab these top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. I'm just going to do this document dot it query selector do this we only have four of them so top left top right bottom left bottom right all right so that should give us those four colorful panels that we can click. And then we want a sequence. So I'm going to say const sequence is equal to, and I'm just going to put some of these in. So top left, bottom right, bottom left, 
top right. So these should all, I'm, I'm pretty much going to make these flash in a particular sequence just to make sure that this works. And what we can do here is, what can we do here? Let's make a function called flash. And you pass that your panel. And what that does is it's going to return a promise. Let's see. I think this should be okay. Re so basically return a promise. And inside that promise, what we're doing is we basically need to turn it white. So I'm going to say panel that class name plus equals to active. So turn it white and then set timeout. We need to remove that again. So after, let's say half a second, that's a magic number. I could probably put that to the top, but we're not making high quality code here. We're making fun code here. So we set the timeout to half a second. And then what we do after that timeout's done is we want to get rid of that active thing we just added. So let's see, this should work. And then we need to resolve when we're done doing that. So if you don't know how promises work, that is a discussion for another topic because it's not straightforward to understand them. Well, some people might find it straightforward, but... But basically, it's a piece of code that is asynchronous and it resolves after some amount of time. And typically what you can do is use a promise to wrap timeouts if you want to wait for something to happen. So we want it to flash one panel. We want to wait half a second and then flash another one, and then wait. And we're going to build an async function here that just self-executes. If you want to use await, await async, you have to be the own little function. Um, you know, so that I don't confuse you all, let me just, <laughs> let me just do this. There, make a function called main and call it. Boom. Easy enough. But inside this main function, what we want to do is let's just call flash of these different panels. So we're going to loop through the sequence. So for let panel of sequence. What I call it? Sequences? No, just sequence. So let panel of sequence, the const panel of sequence, and then call flash. Um, and the main thing we need to do here is just await on it, because if we don't await, it's just going to flash them all at the same time. Let's see what bugs we got. So that went really fast. Let me. So it flashed yellow. It flashed that. Boom, boom. Cool. And every time I refresh the page, it's just going to do that. So the next step is we need the actual gameplay. So as we click on these panels. Actually, let me think. You're starting off the sequence is going to be random, right? So. Let us put all these panels in an array, and this will help us with getting a random panel. Put them all in an array. We have four elements in an array. And what we can do is make a function called get random panel, which is going to, I'll make this private, wrap this inside here. What we're going to do is just basically return panels of um, parsent math.random times panels.length. So if you don't know what this is doing, basically we get the length of the panels, which is four. We pick a random index of that, and then we parse it by an int so that it doesn't give us a bad math. And that'll give us a number between zero and three. So zero, one, two, and three. And that is how you do random randomness in games and programming, basically. So what we can do here is we can just call get random panel four times, and then when we refresh this page, it should flash four random panels. So that time it picked, and let's see if it'll pick a duplicate. There, I picked green a couple times. So that is an issue. You notice there that it picked green, but it just kept staying green. So I think we want some more timeouts. <laughs> so we let it be white for a second. 
and then we change, we remove the class, but then we want to wait probably another half a second or 250 seconds. And then we can resolve. So let's see what this does. So it flashes it, it goes away. That looks a little bit better. <laughs> So typically how the game works is you start off with one panel and then the user has to click on that panel to um, pretty much guess the sequence correctly. So what we can do is add a callback on here. So on click, panel clicked, we could just call it like that. You know what, let me just do this. I think <clears throat> Alright, so let's try adding an on click onto all those panels. And then down here we could say const panel clicked is equal to console.log of panel. Make sure we pass panel in. And let's see if this actually works as I click through these. Alright, so we clicked on panel, top left, bottom right. All right, so we have the panel that we actually clicked. So when the game runs, we flash the panels, and then we allow the player to click. So I'm going to add a variable called can click, set it equal to false, and until all of these panels are done flashing, can't click. So when they're all done, I'll say true. <coughs> and that'll fix one of our things we need to do. So I can't actually I can still click on them because their callback is being called. But I basically want to say if can click is false, just return from this callback. And now if I click on these as it's still flashing, nothing prints out to the console. But when it's done, I can actually click on a sequence. So let's think, what do we need to do? Starting off, we have one sequence, right? The game plays one sequence. So I went here and just removed all the other random panel calls. And when you click on the panel when the sequence is done, you need to check if you clicked on the right panel. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say const let sequence to guess, and that is going to be a clone of sequence. So when we are actually allowed to click, when the game is done flashing what you need to do, we just check um, should have guessed, or say expected panel is sequences, sequence to guess, unshift, I think it's unshift. Is that how you uh, insert? No, it's shift. Removes the first element of the array. Yeah. So that'll remove the first element and give it back to us. And then we just check. Is expected panel equal to the panel clicked? And you might say there's no panel clicked. Well, I'm going to rename this. So panel clicked. And if it is, what we do is we just basically check if the game's over. So if sequence to guess dot length is equal to zero, then I'm going to say start new round. If it's not over, we are just going to allow them to click the next sequence. So if it's not the right one, I'm going to end the game. So alert game over. And I'm going to. Yeah, let's just see that. So flash a color, and then if I click the wrong one, it says panel is not defined. Where is that at? Oh, it's cons I'm console logging this. Let's get rid of that. Try it again. So blue flash, I'm going to click green, game over, because I clicked on the wrong sequence. And we could add a retry function to like restart the game, but I'm just going to keep it simple. So the other case is it flashed. We clicked on the right panel. 
the sequence to guess is now empty, we need to start a new round. So what we can do here for starting a new round is we could just put a new sequence at the end or put a new panel at the end and I'll say get random panel. And then I'll say sequence to guess is equal to that um, sequence array again. Just clone it. And then we want to start the flashing thing again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this into a function called start flashing. Pull that out. And can click needs to be false again. And what we can do in main is just call this. Actually needs to be async. You know what? I don't think I need to uh, have a main anymore. So I'll just call start flashing. That basically prevents you from clicking, does the whole flash sequence, tells you you can click again, and we need to make sure we call it when we're starting a new round here. So let's try this. All right, so it gave us yellow. Let's click it. And then it gave us yellow and blue. Click yellow. Click blue. And then it did yellow, blue, blue. Yellow, blue, blue, green. Yellow, blue, blue, green, red. And I, I mean, that's pretty much the game. I think we've implemented it. And now you can add polish to it. You can make it play sounds when it flashes. You can make it play sounds when you click. You can make it change colors when you click. Um, but... I'll leave that up to you all. This is basically the 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 gist of how you build a Simon Says game. And I'll just re review, re review the code one more time. Um, basically, we get those four panels. We have a function for getting a random panel. We start off with a sequence with an initial random panel. And then we have another array that keeps track of what we actually need to guess. And then we have a function called flash, which basically loops through that sequence and flashes all the panels at a certain rate or interval by simply adding a class called active and removing that class. And then we have a callback function. So when you click on a panel, we check if you clicked on the right panel. Then you just remove from the sequences you need to guess. Um, <clears throat> check if you're done with the current round of games. And if you are, you can start a new round. And then if you click on the wrong panel, you just end the game. And then start flashing basically just loops, loops through all of our current sequences and flashes every panel one by one. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, I could probably spend another 30 minutes just polishing this up, making it look nice, making it be user uh, friendlier, adding text and stuff. But I just wanted to teach you the, the high level overview of how you do the functionality. So again, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon because I'm going to be publishing more videos like this in the future. And be sure to like if you thought this video was entertaining or helped you understand how to program in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Again, I'm Cody Seibert. Happy coding.